Hello everyone, this is Ms. Siddiqui here. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about characterization in literature. Have you ever gotten to know a character so well that you were a little sad when the story you were reading was over? If so, who was that character? Think back to the techniques that the author used to make that character come alive for you. What did they do to make them relatable or likable? Was it how they interacted with other characters? Was it the things that they said? the things that they stood for or did, or their, what they were motivated by? Authors use different techniques to develop and shape a character in our mind. Good authors are able to create a character on the page that makes the reader feel as though they have met a real person. The way a writer reveals the character is called characterization. Poor characterization can make a character uninteresting because that character lacks focus and clarity. In this video, we're going to talk about two different types of characterization, direct and indirect. Direct characterization is what it sounds like. It's when the author tells you directly what a character is like. So the character was mean-tempered or the character was friendly. When an author uses direct characterization, you don't really have to do detective work to figure out that trait about that character. However, authors often use direct characterization in conjunction with indirect characterization, which I'll talk about a little bit later. So let's look at some examples of direct characterization. In this passage, let's look at what Amaya is like. When Amaya brought home a pet rabbit, her mother did not object. She knew Amaya was a caring, responsible girl who would take excellent care of the animal. So the direct characterization here gives you the exact information you need to know about Amaya. She is caring. She is responsible. Let's look at another example of direct characterization. Dr. Chang was the best dentist in the practice. He had a charming smile, a gentle manner, and a warm personality. He made a trip to the dentist. He made a trip to the dentist a pleasant experience despite the discomfort. So what words in this passage give you direct information about Dr. Chang's character? Well, the author tells you directly. He's gentle, he's warm, and he makes the experience of going to a, a dentist pleasant, so therefore he must be kind. So in this passage, the author is directly telling you what this character is like. However, Later, the author might choose to develop Dr. Chang more thoroughly through indirect characterization. So in characterization, authors are creating characters, right? There are two types. If a writer tells you what it's like, direct characterization. If the writer shows you, though, through action, the method is called indirect characterization. So thinking of Amaya and Dr. Chang, it's not just about what they're directly like. They would be developed further in the story through indirect characterization, which we're going to talk about next. So indirect characterization is what writers generally prefer to use. When writers use indirect characterization, they show their characters in action, giving readers a chance to decide for themselves what a character is like. So in this image, Right? We are seeing the character in action dangling a frog above probably a sibling, and the sibling is looking up in surprise. So the author doesn't come out and say, John was mean. Rather, he shows John pulling a prank on his sister to allow you to infer whether you think, is John funny and a jokester, or is John cruel and mean? That's why authors prefer to use indirect characterization. It still allows their readers some agency to make judgments about the character. So a writer can show indirect characterization through appearance, actions, thoughts and feelings, words that the character says, and character relationships. So how does this character interact with others? Writers create a character's appearance carefully. Through exact physical details, a writer can imply or suggest a character's personality. How is the character dressed? What is the character's posture? And what is the character's facial expression might be some clues to tell you about what the character is like. By clinging to her mother, the child appears to be shy and unsure. So instead of telling you that the character is shy, the author might show 
that the child is clinging to her mother and imply that she is shy. By wearing his Boy Scout uniform, this boy appears to be proud of the badges he has earned. So the author might not tell you that this character is proud, but he might describe the way that this character is standing with his uh, badges from Boy Scouts proudly displayed. So let's read a text. What might this character's appearance say about his personality? The man seated in the parked limousine had short hair, piercing eyes, and a serious gaze. He was dressed neatly in a starch white shirt and striped tie. Based on the man's appearance, you might conclude that he is a serious, focused businessman. So notice, even though the author told you directly what they look like, it's actually indirect characterization because describing the appearance made you have to do some detective work to figure out what the character's personality was like. Actions also reveal a great deal about people. For example, people's actions can show whether they are helpful or encouraging or mean and mocking. In stories, characters' actions can also reveal their personalities. Characters' actions can also reveal personality, motivation, and situation. Some authors will provide a window into a character's thoughts and feelings to reveal what they're like. So make sure you read carefully to learn what characters are like on the inside when the author tells you what a character is thinking inside. Writers also give readers a view of their characters from other angles through character relationships. So how one character reacts to another character often reveals qualities of both characters. So as you read your stories, note carefully what characters say to each other and how characters act towards each, towards each other. This will reveal traits about both of them that the author wants you to know and to make decisions about. Another way to figure out what a character is like is by looking at their motivations. So in real life, motivation is the reason why people do things they do. And sometimes in real life, we might not actually know why people act the way that they do. But in books, we have kind of a wider lens depending on the form of narrator for the story. So in real life, what could possibly have made your brother think he could dance? You don't know unless your brother tells you. Or why did your best friend suddenly find a new best friend? You might not know unless you ask her. However, in books, you will find plenty of clues to characters' motivations. Use the clues to find out what makes a character tick and act the way that they do. To uncover a character's motivations, pay attention to what the character says and what the character does. That will tell you a bit about what motivates the characters. Then, think about the outcome of the character's actions. Looking at all those aspects of direct and indirect characterization will help you figure out important details about a character. That will help you to ultimately get to the theme or message of the work. Thanks for watching.